We are starting with Jim. He's in Whitefish, Ontario. Hi, Jim. Mark, uh, David, I've got uh, also got some tax free savings account. I bought it at 42. What would you put in a stop loss for it? Thank you. Great. So, Jim, uh, Alta Gas is a core company in probably our most important theme in our portfolios and has been now for about four years, and that is energy infrastructure. We continue to think that energy infrastructure as an industry is, a, is an industry where there is opportunity for the players to continue to invest and get high returns on their new investments. It plays right into the long life asset theme. And because of the boom in oil and gas production in North America, there's continued opportunity for them to grow. So Alta Gas has been great at growing its dividend. That will continue. Uh, we think that uh, it is really well situated uh, to benefit from the next stage of North American energy build out, which will be to build out liquefied natural gas infrastructure. Um, they've got great assets uh, in uh, BC. Um, their existing uh, utility or transmission business is, uh, is very stable, so it's a good stable part of the business. So this is a company that is in our top 10 holdings, and uh, I think we've recommended here several times. Um, you're in at $42. Uh, I guess at this point, I would use sort of $40 uh, as a stop, which is around where the 200-day moving average is. Uh, there's also a fair bit of support around $40 traded there for a few months. I don't see any sign of a pullback in the near term in this group. Uh, I think it's one that you can continue to buy. Just think about the average 60-year-old investor who I would argue has probably 20% cash, 50% fixed income, and a very relatively small equity component. You just can't get paid, whether it's corporate debt or high-yield debt or sovereign debt. That money is slowly going to work its way out into more predictable assets with dividend growth, and this is a great example. You know, north of 3% yield with dividend growth and, and earnings growth, I think it looks very attractive. A yield of 3.6%, the company beating analyst estimates with earnings today, raising the dividend, which David uh, alluded to. Uh, question, though, uh, the gentleman talked about having this in his tax-free savings account. Um, you're, not getting the, um, you're not getting the dividend tax credit by doing that. Would you recommend against that? That's right. Well, I mean, look, at the end of the day, we're looking for total return, all of us. Uh, and, uh, you know, what he's not getting from a dividend tax credit standpoint, you know, he's getting some tax protection on gains along the way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that if you have a choice, it'd be great to hold this outside of a, a registered account. But having said that, I think that you want to own things, not necessarily that you need, but what other people are going to need. Mm -hmm. And I think that more and more money will continue to work its way into this infrastructure group. And yeah, they're relatively expensive versus the last 10 years. But we could be in an extended period of time where interest rates stay low and the baby boom is going to look for income uh, generators and this fits right into that camp. Okay, David. Uh, Fred is next. He's in Vernon, B.C. Hi, Fred. Hi, how are you today? Good. How are you? Uh, uh, my question is on uh, Methnex and I would like to know uh, um, uh, what uh, his feeling is today on whether it's a buy, sell, or hold. has been asked. Actually, I paid around seventy dollars for it, and it's just been dropping like a rocket. And I would like to know if he knows the reason for that. Thank you for your time. Right, came out with earnings just the other day. I think there's one analyst who called the the earnings lackluster, surprisingly yeah. lackluster. I, I think that I think that people weren't excited about the near term uh, outlook. This is what I would say about my uh, Methanex. So, in the way that we look at things, first of all, we think the most ac attractive asset class right now is e equities. As I mentioned, you do get paid to take the risk to own equities currently. Within the equity asset class. From a sectoral standpoint, one of the key themes is industrials, and in the industrials, one of the key themes we like is chemicals. So we have quite a number of chemicals investments. Uh, Methanex is one, although a smaller one for us. Um, what the reason we like Methanex, uh, sorry, like the chemicals, is in North America, the North American producers of chemicals are benefiting from low natural gas costs relative to the rest of the world. Uh, Methanex does have some higher gas costs in a couple of its markets. Uh, but in general, we think that as the economy gets a little bit better, the chemicals producers participate. So, uh, you know, I think that you wouldn't want to see this stock break $60. That would be a, a, a real negative. You should see it hold in here and start to start to turn higher. The rest of the group is getting better. If you look at LYB, Lee and Dell, which is a company we've recommended here in the past, you know, is trading very well. Um, I think you're okay with it. I would prefer to buy Lee and Dell than a Methanex. Uh, it's about to break out, LYB in New York, uh, but I like the group as a whole. Methanex is a 200-day moving average is 61.65. Uh, we'll take a break here, and we'll come back with David right after this.